Hey everyone, welcome back to our class on machine learning. So today we are going to learn a very important classifier named as support vector machine. Okay. So the concepts that I will discuss are deeply influenced by the book on ISLR and also the book by Aurelio Geron. So let's see what are the contents. So uh, SVM is quite a step-by-step -step process. So we'll look at something called as maximum margin classifier. Then we'll see that how that can be more generalized into support vector classifier. So we'll stop here at this lecture and then in the next lecture, we'll look at how some non-linearity can be introduced to make support vector mm. classifiers more generalized into support vector machine. We will outline support vector regression and we'll look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of support vector machine. So let's get started. So as you remember that classification is a task where there are multiple categories and there are multiple independent variables. So let's say here you have two classes cat and dog and essentially what you want to do is you want to draw a line which will serve as a decision bound okay which will separate them so maybe like this okay and once you have this decision boundary if something is on the uh, right side you will call it a cat and if something is on the left side you will call, call it as a dog good but the thing is that you may agree that this is not the only choice of decision boundary there can be another decision boundary like this there can be a part the decision boundary like this and if you think there can be infinitely so many possibilities okay so what do we do how do we choose an optimal one from there okay so let's carry forward this intuition so what do we want actually we want the nearest cat and the nearest dog from the decision boundary should be well separated okay let me repeat I want this nearest cat and the nearest dog from the margin or from the decision boundary to be well separated. Okay, so well separated can be called as a margin. Okay, and instead of having one line, now we take help of three lines. So one is your decision boundary, the red one, the red thick one, and then this blue dotted ones on the other side, which are parallel and equidistant from the red line. Not only that, you will see that it crosses or it touches the nearest points, right? Okay, so these are kind of, you know, the, the starting of the no entry zone. So no dog can be, can cross this line. No cat can be crossing this line. And such a line is called as the maximum margin classifier. Okay, and these Cats and dogs also have a name. Okay, so these are called the support vectors, and distance between these supporting decision boundaries or the supporting lines of the decision boundaries are called as a margin. Okay. Now uh, let us quickly appreciate one of the characteristics of support vector machine. So generally, all other classifiers focus on the majority classes pattern. So what do I mean by that? So I mean by that, that the cats, which are more cats and the dogs, which are more dogs, you focus on that. Okay. So I can call them as maybe catty cats and doggy dogs. Okay. Whereas SVM focus is on the cats, which are very, very close to the dog, the support vectors, right? Which maybe I will call as catty dogs, dogs which have many catty features and doggy cats, cats, which has many features like a dog. Okay. So maybe something like this. All right. And we say other classifiers focus on catty cat and doggy dog. Support vector machines will focus on doggy cat and catty dog. Okay. So they are focusing on the extreme points, which are the support vectors. All right. Some more terminologies. So, as we said, this is the maximal margin classifier. Now, there is a term called as hyperplane. Okay. So, what is a hyperplane? So, basically, you know, this decision boundary 
if it is in a two dimensional plane it is a line if i have three features then my feature space is three dimensional so naturally if i have to you know bifurcate it in two regions for two classes i need a plane okay which will be two dimensional and if i go further beyond i have p dimensions then i will need a plane of p minus 1 dimension so such a thing is called as a hyperplane okay and this hyperplane will have equation so as a straight line has a equation beta 0 beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 equal to 0 a hyperplane will have a equation like beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus beta p x p equal to 0 so there is an alternative notation of that which is a vector notation okay so i will tell i talk about that also so basically this beta 0 beta 1 beta 2 beta p or maybe beta 1 to beta p these are called as weights of this line okay weight vectors of this line and this weights can be thought as uh, as a vector and this x1 to xp can also be thought as a vector. now is there a way i can multiply these two vectors and get this yes so if i just take a transpose of the weight vector and multiply with this x vector i can get something like this so y transpose x plus b is w1 x1 plus up to wn xn plus b okay so this is to deal with or look at the vector way of dealing with it okay so now uh, let's say that this is my uh, decision boundary i am not showing the uh, supporting lines over here and what we want to find out what we can say about 0 0 1 1 2 2 3 in the sense that which side there of course if we look at visually we can tell but you know it is you will not uh, by instant can plot it and tell that where these are right if if you are given a line and the So do you remember one easy trick? The easy trick is you can just put these values over here, okay, and calculate. So for zero zero, you can calculate three into zero plus two into zero minus six equal to zero. For one one, you can calculate three into one plus two into one minus six equal to zero. And you can do for all of them. And if you do, you will see one particular thing happening. You will see that the points which are on the left side of this uh, red line of this decision line. they are negative and which are on the right side they are positive okay so just by looking at the sign you can call it that which side of the line they are okay so that is that is uh, one of the things also this has a relation with the distance okay so you see that this 3 3 has a value 9 okay and 2 2 has a value 4 Zero zero has a value minus six, and one one has a value minus one. Okay, so this may not be actual distance, but this can be the distance. This can be proportional to the distance. So if you remember that the, if there was a line x one plus b x two plus c equal to zero, and you have some points x three and x four, you could have found out the distance by looking at a x three plus Uh, you know, b b x four plus c by root over a square plus b square plus c square equal to the distance. Okay, that's how we could have done it. All right. So again, uh, with the vector notation, this this can be thought as where it is less than zero. This is zero. Many cases we'll take it as minus one for simplicity of calculation. And if it is greater than equal to zero, then it is class one. Okay. All right. So. with some more mathematical notation what we want to do now is we want to maximize the value of m for a given value of beta 0 beta 1 beta p so like in the case of linear regression we wanted to minimize the square error sum of square error given the value of beta 0 beta 1 beta 2 like that right and subject to beta z square sigma beta z square equal to 1 basically you remember for distance calculation we talked about this root over a square plus b square plus c square in the denominator so if we use this beta z square equal to 1 then calculation of the distance becomes very simple so now if you have a point xi1 xi2 xip 
then the distance from the decision boundary can be given as beta 0 plus beta 1 xi 1 plus beta 2 xi 2 plus beta p xi 2. Okay. Now hold on for a moment and tell me if it is on the left side, okay, then what is the value of what will this value be? This will be a negative value. And what will be the corresponding yi? Yy will also be negative. So negative and negative will become positive. And that positive has to be greater than or equal to m. m is nothing but the margin. Okay. So you are trying to maximize margin and then for each point, so on the positive side, anyway this will be positive, yi is positive, the product will be positive. So essentially you are trying to tell for all the training observations, this product should be greater than or equal to m. Okay, so this is what you want to do. All right. Now a problem with this classifier is that it is too strict. Okay, so what happens if you have some outliers, like you see this case, okay that this is a fair enough good uh, class only thing is that one of this uh, class have somehow managed to be there okay which is probably an outlier okay but no linear decision boundary supported by your supporting lines can be there okay similarly here there is an outlier and you can fit a line but looking at this i am sure you will not be comfortable that your majority classes are so far away. So one class is quite, you know, quite on the margin and another is quite far from, from, the, from this line. Okay. All right. Now look at another example. So here you have a, you know, blue class and a purple class. And if a new point is added over here, let's say this blue point, see the shift in the hyperplane. There is a dramatic uh, shift in the hyperplane or the decision boundary. So this kind of behavior you do not want. Okay. So such a you know uh, uh, when your decision boundary or when your classifier is like this, you say it is not robust. Okay. So what do you want to do now? So you probably want to give some amount of allowance, some amount of slackness you want to show. Okay. So that they can be maybe outside the margin and maybe on outside of the decision boundary also okay something of this sort so here you see that original your hard margin classifier doesn't allow uh, doesn't allow this 11 to be on this side so now using this support vector classifier concept this can be allowed okay and 12 also can be here. So if we look at it analytically, then we'll see that there are few types. So basically for all of them, we find a slack variable count or slack variable measure, which is denoted by epsilon i. So epsilon i is 0 if it is correctly placed. Okay. So correctly placed can be two types, right? This 10 is correctly placed, not only on the correct side of the decision boundary, but also on the correct side of the supporting line okay here uh, you know if you look at 3 4 5 6 they are not only on uh, like correct side of decision boundary but also on the correct side of the supporting line okay however uh, and of course of course if you look at 4 9 and 12 they are your support vectors for for them also epsilon i equal to 0 okay so you don't you, you are not actually concerned about the actual distance but you want to just look at whether they are on the right side or not. Okay. Now you put for some uh, this thing y equal to 0 to 0 0.5. So you are taking this margin as one unit. Okay. And by that you are doing the calculation. So this is 0 0.5 and this is 0 0.5. So that means that this has violated and this is between the margin and the decision boundary. Okay. But right side of the decision boundary, not on the other side. So an example of that will be, you know, an example of that will be 8, an example of that will be 1, okay. But there are further examples where it is more than 0 0.5. So 11 is completely on the other side. Similarly, 12 is also on completely on the other side, okay. So for those cases, epsilon is greater than 0 0.5. All right. So now what we do is, basically, we sum them up 
okay we sum them up in a variable called as c which you can thought as a budget which is the which is the summation of all the slacks for all the observations okay so there is these two changes now in uh, the equation one is you make greater than equal to m into 1 minus epsilon i so you you are allowing this slack however the slackness is will not go unbound okay and such a support vector classifier is also called as a soft margin classifier so you can understand why soft because you are allowing it to be the on the other side it is no longer hard so we'll look at now the effect of c okay on the decision boundary so if you have a large c then the decision boundary will be very very wide like in this case okay and you can see that there are a lot of points which are coming between the decision boundary and the supporting line okay both for both cases all right okay and if you keep on the other hand side small value of c then it is it will have something like this where the decision boundary is much narrow okay so this is an effect of c which which you need to study okay so in next class we will look at nonlinearity and uh, the other things uh, that we have thank you so much for watching please give your comments in the question section